Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here, and in this video we're going to be going over the different sigils and how to unlock them in Final Fantasy XV's multiplayer expansion, Comrades. Now keep in mind this video is being made for version 1.0.0, aka the initial launch of Comrades, and as such, not every sigil is actually available in the game yet. They will be added through free updates now that you've already forked over your 1999, so don't worry your little head, you're not going to be paying extra for those sigils, fingers crossed. Anyway. We're going to be showing you what each of the sigils does and where they are on the power grid in this video. So let's explain what a royal sigil is. If you go to your gear menu, very early in the game you'll be introduced to the royal sigil option. These are basically specs for your character. They give you increased stats and maybe decreased stats depending on which one it is, and give you alternate abilities in order to uh, cooperate with your teammates to come up with something unique or to cater to your specific playstyle. Now available in the game currently, we have the Wanderer, the Rogue, the Tall, the Just, the Pious, the Oracle, and the Warrior. Uh, you can equip these at any point where you're not in the middle of a mission, so feel free to play around with them in the different weapons and different builds that you're thinking of whenever you really want, especially when you're in Lashalem doing weapon upgrades. I'll be doing separate videos on builds that I prefer in the game, and some of them may actually have multiple uh, sigils that actually work for them. So first we have the Wanderer. Actually, we should probably start with the Oracle. So the Oracle is one you're going to unlock very early on. It is going to be the first one everyone unlocks as, a, as it is mandatory as part of the main story to introduce the concept of Sigil to you in the first place. This is basically your healing spec. It doubles your current MP, but it makes you take a hit to your physical offense and physical defense. It also greatly increases your magical defense and the amount of healing you actually do. It also takes your base curative spell and actually makes it have a wider range and recover more HP. Oracle synergizes well with modifications to the curative spells as well as additional spirit, and then includes things such as adding the protect effect to your heal or adding the Asuna effect to get rid of uh, bad debuffs. After that, you can unlock any of these at any point where you run into them in the power grid, and that is how all of them, at least at the current moment, are going to be unlocked. The Wanderer sees buffs to your HP and MP, as well as a minor increase to your physical defense. It also replaces your offensive spell with the ability Cheer, which is a channeled skill that will gradually give buffs to everyone in your vicinity, all of your allies, I should say. It can give you any one of five different buffs, so if everyone stacks together and gets these buffs, then they'll have them for a short period of time. Personally, don't think those buffs last long enough and that the Wanderer could use a little bit of a buff. The Rogue increases your MP by a little bit, and also increases your physical attack by a moderate amount, as well as your physical defense, and even your healing a little bit. The big thing with the Rogue Sigil is it gives you access to Aerial Ace, which allows you to expend MP while you're mid-air to do basically a little side dodge in the air itself, making you invulnerable for those frames that you're actually performing the mid-air step. This does cost MP, which is why you're given the bonus 20% MP, and as well as that, the Rogue Sigil also does more damage in the air. Great for weapons such as the Shurikens, also especially great for the Spear, it is my favorite weapon to use with the Rogue, so give it a shot if you've got a good Spear lying around. The Tall is one I find myself using, and this is basically your go-crazy physical DPS. It has a minus 50% hit to your offensive magic, so you're probably not going to be using any at all. It gives you a little bit more health and also gives you a massive increase in physical attack. But the big thing that this actually does is replaces your curative spell with aura, which will double your attack power for about 15 seconds. This uses all of your MP and it completely replaces your curative spell, meaning the tall has no means of self-sustaining itself unless you want to grab weapons that have life drain on them or get healed by your allies or hang from a point warp. The tall works really well when paired with other jobs to look over it and you can do massive amounts of damage, especially excuse me, if you apply the aura buff before going in against the opponent. It is my go-to uh, sigil for farming missions that specifically are weak to certain physical aspects. Just keep in mind, it does come with the high risk of not being able to heal yourself without the use of your teammates. The Just is basically a defender and is also one of my favorites. This provides a pretty moderate boost to HP and increases your MP by 50%, as well as increasing your physical defenses by 30%. The big thing that this does is it turns your basic block into a 360 degree protective barrier that your allies can stand in. This will increase their defense and gradually recover their HP as well as yours at the expense of MP every time the HP recovery actually ticks. 
This is great for dealing with either large attacks or for healing up allies while other enemies are being taken care of. You'll see a lot of the AI if you ever get paired with them. One specifically that has them is, I believe her name is Jenica, and you can find it incredibly useful. The only thing you have to keep in mind is that if you do run out of MP while using your Omni Guard, it's going to break the shield and everyone inside is not really going to have a good time. On to the next one, we have the Pious, and this is basically your Black Mage of this. It decreases your HP and your physical attack by 30%, which is very significant, but it increases your magical stat by 70%. It also causes you to cast two spells every time you would cast one, although you do expend more MP to do so. You recover your MP a lot faster, but also using things such as point warps or nearby cover can be used to just basically sling out spells at a super fast rate. Incredibly effective against enemies that have any weakness to magic, though you do need a lot of magic stat for it to really pair up against some of the other physical builds in the game. The Oracle we already covered, and I already mentioned what it synergizes well with. The last one that's available in version 1.0.0 is the Warrior. So the Warrior has the unique ability of being able to provoke enemies and gives you Noctis's base dodge, you know, the one where you hold square in the main game and he just kind of dodges out of the way casually. So for those of you looking for an experience the most like Noctis's, the Warrior's Sigil is probably going to be the one you end up going with. However, if you dodge at the last second, you also unleash a Vacuum Wave, which is really powerful at toppling enemies, so it's good for that. So if you can master this in the high skill cap that comes with it, you can be insanely effective, especially against larger enemies. It does come with an HP boost, but it also suffers a 30% physical defense loss. This is because the idea is, as the sigil states, to be untouchable. It does slightly increase your magic stat as well, so it does synergize somewhat well with magical uh, builds. Not nearly as good as the Pious, but if you're looking for something that's a little tankier for your Black Mage build, then the Warrior's Sigil might be a pretty good option, especially considering the ease of using the dodge option for the Warrior itself. The ones we don't have available are the Father, the Wise, the Conqueror, the Clever, the Mystic, and the Fierce. We don't know when we'll be getting these, but I believe they released a video showcasing what the different abilities are for every single different sigil. It just shows like their basic ability. I remember, I think one of them was like a Dragoon one, but I don't remember which one is which, so we'll go over these when they actually come out. So what do you say we actually go into showing off each of these? We will start with the Wanderer, since it's the first on the left. And to do that, we're going to hop into a mission and just make a private room real quick. We're going to make a custom room. This means that every minute I'll have to choose to extend the room, but, you know, it's whatever. Uh, I guess I'll throw some random password on it. Uh, don't try to join this. It's not going to be there by the time you guys watch it. Very well. Alright, so whenever you're going into a mission while you're waiting for other allies to pop up, you can of course use the Praktar to test it out. Uh, so, as you can see, if you look at L2 circle in the bottom left, I have the cheer option. Now, I do get to keep my curative spell with the Wanderer, which makes it at least a somewhat okay option for keeping, uh, keeping care of yourself. But the cheer option, and you won't even see it work on me, basically looks like this. When you, hold, when you press L2 and circle, it'll just do this until you either get hit or dodge out of the way. Every single one of those flashes is basically applying a buff to a nearby ally, but as you can see, the buffs don't apply to me, so you really are mostly in the supportive role for your party. Now it looks like the uh, by the time we actually get through to the next thing, it'll be it'll ask me if I want to disband the room. We'll look at the rogue next. Uh, we'll also equip a spear for this. Let's go with the knight's lance. All right, recruitment period is ended. I'll just press uh, retry, and we'll keep going. Try again. So with the Rogue, we now have access to sweet aerial combos, as you'll see right here. You can stay in the air, dodge around, go for the aerial attack right there. It expends MP every time I do it, but you can stay in the air infinitely so long as you have MP to support it, and then going right above for that finishing combo. It's incredibly satisfying, especially with the spear, and if you're dealing with any flying enemies or large enemies that have dangerous ground attacks, it is an awesome choice. You still also do have op uh, options to use your curative or offensive spells, so you're not completely out of other options other than physical attacks. The next one we're going to show off is the Tall, and this one's really quick. So basically it replaces the curative spell with Aura, which I'll hit it once. You'll see I did like 4,000 damage. I use Aura. 
I do about 8,000 damage. So you can see what I mean by it basically doubles your attack power. And that's pretty much the big thing that that brings. But you don't have that self-healing option, so be careful. Press try again. Switch to the next one. The next one is the Just. Luckily, this won't take too long. It basically makes it so that your shield, which I guess I should show what the regular shield looks like, the regular block. So the regular block in the game looks like this. I said it looks like this. Oh, I probably have to be in combat for it to work. There you go. Uh, it looks like that. It's a shield. It's protective. It's pretty awesome. Even heals a little bit over time. When you switch it to the Just, that shield instead becomes this which will heal everyone inside over time at the cost of your MP. You can see my MP very rapidly declining in the bottom right and gives everyone higher defense as long as they're inside. Really good for protecting allies, especially against more deadly attacks. Next we have the Pious, and this one is definitely going to require me to, I guess, grab some different items real quick. Nah, I haven't upgraded that yet. I guess I can grab that and that. And that should be okay. So, the Pious takes your spells, which, by the way, if you haven't played Comrades yet, your spells are tied to your individual weapons. So, your basic spell, your basic offensive spell, just looks like this. It's just like a puff of air. And even then, it casts it twice. Uh, for this, now, I have my Fyra, which does pretty good damage, like in Burning. And you can also see it costs a, a, pretty, a pretty severe amount of uh, MP. You have Blizzaga, which also hits twice. And then you have Thundara. I'm still in the process of getting the Thundaga and Fyraga options. And on top of that, don't forget that there are options for Warp Strike combos that actually perform your spells as well. Now, while that doesn't successfully trigger multicast, it does benefit from the fact that you do have so much bonus magic. As you can see, doing pretty decent damage here against the Praktar himself. Next, we have the Oracle, which isn't too exciting. Uh, I'll show off the basic heal one more time before it resets. So this is just what the basic heal looks like. This actually has a very tiny AoE that you can't really see here. But nothing to write home about. You know, if, if everyone's really tightly grouped, it's, it's not a bad option for a heal. However, if you have an Oracle, you have a much better option. Healing Light, as you can see, has... Is, that's not the uh, healing one. Has a much wider range. It's hard to see, I guess, on this specific surface. But you can kind of see the ground lighting up, and that's the range itself. And with so much space and... Uh, the amount of MP regeneration that I have, I can really take care of teammates if I have a more spirit-focused build. Also, don't forget that some items have uh, properties that actually change your defensive abilities. I don't think I have any that have it on, but I can look at the materials real quick and show you. Yeah, alright. I'll probably have to wait for the next one, but if we go into items, we go here, there you go. So you can see in the bottom left, Curative Spell, Protect, basically makes it so that whenever I use my Curative Spell, it also increases everyone's defense. So with these things, like Asuna and Protect, you can actually equip a bunch of different ones, and even the Cure ability to greatly enhance your healing. And you can actually make yourself a pretty big defensive powerhouse that is very, very valuable to groups. So if you're someone who likes healing and taking care of your teammates, there is a place for you in this game, but I still do recommend at least going in and trying to land a few hits whenever it's safe. And I believe the last build we have is the Warrior. So the Warrior is going to be hard to show. Um, when I hold square, it's not going to show anything because there's, you know, I don't have... You want to swing at him real quick? There you go. So that's, uh, that's me taunting right there. So that is actually drawing their attention towards me which makes me the tank. Uh, you can use that to make the make the warrior actually be the one official tank of this game. Although it is an evasion tank since so you don't have very high defense. If you just keep holding square and walk around, you'll notice he walks around kind of like Noctis does. And if I were to get swung at, it would do the exact same kind of dodge as Noctis. You still do have your magic options should you want them. You can see it's not bad magic damage, not at all. Well, it doesn't help when I get into stasis, but you can see that uh, magic still pretty viable to actually use if you're a warrior. I know it sounds strange, but it ends up working out that way. So those are the different sigils currently available in the game. We will see more sigils made available later, but it does give you a good means of variety in terms of mixing up your playstyle, especially with the revamped magic system for comrades. It uh, definitely comes to fruition in allowing you to really customize your experience. But anyway, that's going to be a wrap for... The oh, no, no, no. 
I didn't, uh, I didn't show, there's one thing I didn't show you, so we went over the Good examples, but I forgot to show you where they actually are on the power grid. So the first one you're going to unlock is part of the story, that's this one. This power station is where you'll unlock the Oracle. Luckily, with just the names, we'll be able to see the rest of them. Now, keep in mind, you're very often going to have to go through boss missions in order to get to these. Uh, for example, in order to get over here, I needed to defeat, uh, what was it? This was a Midgard Sarmer, and this was a Karlobos. So after you defeat the Midgard Sarmer, I'd be able to get the Tomb of the Wanderer, which was the one that did the cheering option. Up here, we have the Rogue, which I had to defeat... I don't remember what boss that was, but you'll have to defeat a boss right here in order to gain access to the Tomb of the Rogue. Now we go down here to the bottom left. We already covered the Wanderer. Nothing over here. However, down here is the Pious. So if you're going for a Spellcaster build, once you actually leave Lashtalem, make your way down towards Old Lashtalem, and then make your way down here. There is a Bandersnatch boss fight down here. It's not that hard, but it is something that is going to stand in the way of you getting uh, really, really close to your magic build. You may want to consider using Rogue and its increased MP early on, or reaching for the Warrior, which is much easier to reach on the map. Until then, though, uh, here's the Pious, and that's where that'll go. Moving over here, we have the Just. This is the one that did the 360 degree uh, bubble around them in place of your block. This one's pretty easy to access. This mission right here is a Cursed Coral. It's only a level 18 Coral mission, but Corals can give you trouble, uh, especially if they hit their instant death attack on you. So this one may cause you a bit of strife if you don't have uh, any powerful options, whether they be magic or physical. Uh, moving on, this is the Warrior. This is the easiest one to unlock in terms of its position to your starting point, which is here in Lashtalem. You only have to beat a couple of missions, but the big thing is it costs 38,000 Meteor Shards in order to actually access it. So, considering how many Meteor Shards missions are worth early, you may want to wait to unlock this until after you have the Robot Resurrection mission right here. Uh, because that's an easy, easy mission, even at low levels, and it gives you over, I think it gives you like close to 5,000 kilowatts or meteor shards every single time you do it. So that should be a helpful option for you guys as well. Moving over here, moving over here, we have the Tomb of the Tall. Now this is actually going to be a very dangerous spot to get to. There are a lot of very high level, yet very important hunts on the way here. And most specifically, you'll have to defeat the Jabberwock. And not just one, but two, it's a pretty tough mission, one that even the highest level characters farm. However, you know, you got to get through it. If you want to get to the tall, you got to get through it. Let's just recap real quick. Make sure we got all seven. We have the Oracle. We have the Rogue. We have the Wanderer. We have the Pious. We have the Just. We have the Warrior. And we have the Tall. Looking at the map real quick. Give you guys a quick... I can't zoom out any further, unfortunately, so you can see the rogue in the top left. This is from the starting point. You can kind of get a rough idea of where it is you're going. Those three are over there. You got the one down here, the one here, the one right here, and then the one down there in the bottom right. So hopefully this was useful to you. Yeah, best of luck indeed. Uh, thank you, everybody, for watching this video. Be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share. And you know what? Kenny Crow is the man. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, take care.